Hello, my friends. How are you? I'm Helen Sattler, your destiny helper. And I am glad to be with you on this beautiful morning here to talk about things that you are asking questions about. I did a teaching on, <clears throat> excuse me, narcissistic mirroring. And many of you was asking about them and have recognized that these things was done to you. Some of you are free from it and some of you are right in the midst of it. And you was asking me um, to continue to elaborate on that. So this is part two. And I want to talk to you about the gradual fade, because many of you that are dealing with being mirrored by the narcissist says sometimes it's like you're fading out. It's like you're losing yourself. And this is true because when they mirror you, they're projecting the excellent parts of you, the good parts of you, the things they don't have. They begin to project that by absorbing it from you and projecting it back to you. And eventually they want to bring out the trace they are. And this is when your trauma bonding come in. This is when your gaslighting come in. And many, uh, of you go through, uh, many of you said you went through devaluation and you were so traumatized because right after that, it was the discard. And so I'm here to talk to you about mirroring. Hello, Sandy. How are you? Good morning. I am so glad that you are with me on this morning. We are talking about the narcissistic mirroring. We're continuing with that being able to answer some questions because they mirror you, they project from you the good parts of you. You have wonderful traits which attracted them. They weren't just the weaknesses. And a lot of narcissists, when they meet you, they mirror you and they open you up. When you get mirrored by the narcissist, hello, uh, soaring feathers, how are you? Thank you for being with me on this morning. I'm so excited about you being here. I really enjoyed our last uh, conversation piece. It was literally awesome when we were together. And many of you that are going through it, and many of you who have went through it, she said, I just watched your last video too. Oh, hello there now. Yeah, I remember. Great education. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoyed that. It was a pleasure for me to do that teaching. And so I want to talk to you about mirroring. Uh, what did you notice when you were mirrored? And when did you notice that you were mirrored? This is for Soaring Feathers and this is for Sandy Lou. When did you notice that you were the narcissist was mirroring you was and how did you feel about that hello red thank you for joining me i was thinking about you today some of your comments and reply was simply fantastic i loved it and very 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 informative Thank you. Greetings to you. And what I was asking them, Red, when you noticed that the narcissist was mirroring you, how did it make you feel? And when did you notice? So many of you can write your answer down and we will read those answers because many people, she said that I, she noticed he, he told me he ate oatmeal every morning like me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, one uh, young lady was saying she noticed in a moment of passion when the narcissist was with her that every sound she made, he made uh, soaring feathers. She said, I never knew, just learned about it after I, I threw her out of my home. Whoa. That was a very bold move. Good morning, SH. How are you? Yeah. Uh, if you notice that things that they say they didn't like and you liked it, they took over those things. They start imitating those things. And whatever you did, they start mirroring. And this is the narcissist. The narcissist is made up of all of these attributes that they mirror from previous relationships. And you can imagine if they've had 
she said, uh, so in feathers, I just learned. OK. And many of them that have had several relationships, you can tell where they've been. You can actually track where they've been because of the different personalities that they have, the different things they like. If you don't have love, you get someone who love. And based on what they have received of love, that's what they mirror back to you because a narcissist does not cannot and will not love you. They will mirror what they think love is and they will give you what you think love is. She said, facial expression. I raised my eyebrow a lot. And in the first photos I took, his eyebrows are raised, although that would not be his natural expression. Absolutely. And if you and if you notice um, when they begin to mirror you, um, that you you is usually on good terms when they mirror you, because after that, when they start to degrade you and devalue you and gaslight you, they start releasing who they are and they don't want to mirror because they need pain. Narcissists also pick people who can handle a tremendous amount of pain because they know the cycle that they're going to take you through. And when they take you through this cycle, you have to be able to handle the pain, the trauma that you're going to go through because they're going to take your emotions through trauma. And they get with you during the first phases of mirroring you, uh, idolizing you because they need to absorb you. They need you so addictive to them that they need that negative fuel. And when they need that negative fuel, they need you to be, be able to handle such aggressive and severe pain that it don't knock you out. Usually a codependent person, it knocks them out because they can handle a lot of pain and they take and absorb all of that pain. And on Monday, they are still absorbing. On Tuesday, they're in the hospital where they have just lost it. Um, and like I was telling you, there's a difference between an empath. An empath is made, they, they can handle pain because they're empathetic. They're into people's emotion. They're into the rescue module. So they can handle pain, but the regular empath can be knocked out and not all of them are wise enough to pull out like the super empath. Red said, wow, it's just like so sick to think that someone would go to those lengths uh, to complete insanity. The, the narcissist would go to any length to get fuel and to break you any length. And they like long terms. So when they discard you, they, they're expecting for you to stay intact and not move. So they don't want you to go anywhere else. They expect for you to stay intact because you will receive a Hoover because there may be when they are devaluing someone else, they'll pull you back in. And when they are devaluing devaluing you, they're triangling someone else. And so in Feather said, 15 years living with me and I couldn't take the insanity. 15 years of living with me and I couldn't take that. It's crazy. It's crazy. 15 years is really something that you were able to pull away like this. And I think you said you kicked her out. Uh, did you say you kicked her out? Um, Soaring feathers. And, and uh, SH said, she said, I love to laugh. And in the beginning, we laughed all the time. And when it stopped, it never came back. But I didn't know he was mirroring me. Right. OK. Soaring feathers say yes. See, and the reason he didn't laugh again, because after you, he took on someone else and it wasn't their character to laugh. So when you got, when you get the narcissist back, if you notice the narcissist, once he discard you and he come back, he's not the same narcissist because he have mirrored someone else. He's been with someone else. And so now all of these things is coming back to him. It's coming back to you rather. And so you are getting the last specimen or the last few uh, uh, specimens that he has been with. And if he's been with more than one, he's mirror all of them. And so all of that is in interjecting in his personality. And that's why when you look at the narcissist, you wondering who are who are you because this is not the person that I was with no because that's not you so you are not going to get 
who you were. You're going to get who they are. And then he's coming back to you. And so when he tried to mirror you, he's mirroring you out of the expression of having been with them. And if it's someone that you don't like the character that he's taking on, then it imposes upon you. You really don't like him. And so that's when he will go into absorption. When he go into absorption, this is when he's repetitious and doing things for you to make sure that you go to this restaurant, you eat this food, to make sure you smell this cologne, make sure you talk to these people. He will even integrate you into his, uh, among his elite business partners so that you can feel uh, a, a sense of belonging to him. And then when you feel a sense of belonging to him, he slowly, gradually move you away from your world. And when he remove you away from your world, we call this the, the fade zone because you start to phase out. You start to fade out. And so who you are slowly disappears and who he is slowly appears because you do everything to make it happy. Even if you don't notice, you're becoming who he is. And you are sad. And I mean the whole, the void, not the ugliness, the whole, the void. You're sad. You're empty. She said, not the same. She was mean because she had to go to the shelter. Oh my Lord. Um, hello there. New beginning. That is, that is really, really terrible. She said one later, one a year later, she's living with someone else. I just learned. Well, you know, a narcissist will move on. They will move on. She sound like a lower narcissist because she don't have her own. And lower narcissists usually go from pillar to post. They never establish themselves. They're mean and hateful. They can get very violent. They're dependent on parents, dependent on family. They can't keep a job. They're hostile and they're very controlling, but they are physically violent, even to the point where they will kill. They will kill. So when your narcissist threaten you and they are lower narcissists and they're telling you what they're going to do, that is on their mind. They are not going to stop until they get that feat done. They will commence to carry out what they say. And a lot of people take it uh, very lightly. Never take a lower narcissist lightly. When they tell you they're going to do something, you will start picking up behavior modes. And see, we talk about mirroring. In the beginning, they mirror you because the lower narcissist is so filled with hatred and violence. And as they move up the chain, they start using the cerebral aspect of it, uh, like the upper mid and the greater narcissist is definitely a mental a manipulator. And so when that upper narcissist get your mind, most folk break down when most of the people that can handle him is usually a super empath because she she or he will put up all stuff and say enough is enough. Boom, they go supernova. And so now it's narcissist to narcissist. And eventually even a supernova will leave. They will escape because the pain and the trauma that is necessary for this narcissist. And then a narcissist can be confusing because they don't feel it's like trying to discern a board until they're discernment. They, they start messing with their discernment by not feeling, especially the greater narcissist that knows that super empath will just shut down. And so that super empath will start to mirror the narcissist while the narcissist is trying to mirror the super empath. And so they end up tormenting each other. Other than that, the regular person get absorbed. They get absorbed in the mirroring aspect. They fall so in love with that narcissist until they can't survive without them because the narcissist will become your whole world and they don't stop until they become your whole world. That's why they look for long-term relationships, especially the primary, secondary source. Uh, the narcissist that I was with got married less than six months after I discarded him, one of the living flying monkeys called to tell me, I told the monkey, uh, his marriage is, a, is fraudulent, just like him. Well, I think they will make sure he wanted to make sure he gets to you because it doesn't matter if a narcissist marry. 
That is not enough to keep him faithful. He will cheat on his wife. He will cheat with your sister, your cousin, your grandmother, or your great grandmother. A, a narcissist needs supply. He's supply oriented. And that's why no matter how you dress, he chooses whether he wants to be uh, impressed because being good looking don't impress him. Being very few release oriented, that's what's impressing him. Uh, let me clear that. Um, and this is new beginning, new beginnings. So, oh yeah, they are destructive. I just found out from my, uh, a counselor that I am a super empath. And that is exactly what happened. Now I have to rebuild myself from the ground up mentally first. Yes. And see, usually super, yeah, super empath, they only let you go so far. That's anybody, a super empath, you cross them and they, they, they go supernova on you. Then you start getting those narcissistic traits about them because they pull the empath empathetic part of them, uh, uh, they pull it back. They hold it back and they release themselves because it's a form of protection. Remember, these are great protectors, but they protect themselves too. The lower and mid empath don't always do that because the lower empath sometimes can be very codependent because they they keep trying to assist and keep trying to help. And the mid empath is not as dependent and they can handle more pain and the mid empath will pull out. They would, will escape where the supernova go back for resistance and go back for revenge. And then when it's too much, they will pull out. Hello, RN. How are you? I am so glad to be with you on today. Hello, Mark. He said, how come my wife doesn't treat her children mean and hateful? They're all grown, but I was the only person to get treated mean and hateful. Well, I think if you really get into the children, I don't know how they can't, because if they can't love the children, it's not going to get the love they need. And they may put on a front because she is what she is to the core and everybody gets it. That And then when you don't see it, they're, 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 they're idolizing their moon, honeymooning or their love bombing. And the honeymoon is they have, they've already married to the situation. And this is the after effect of the love bombing. And then sometimes they're idolizing. They're building you, building you, building you because they know the higher they build you, build you, the, the more you're going to crash. And so you were a primary source. Primary source always suffer the most because they're the closest. And you were a primary source. You were the main fuel tank. And so she looked for you for main fuel. And that's probably why every three days she keep calling you and she can't get away from you because you were a main fuel tank. And being a main fuel tank, they always come back with a few. She can marry somebody else and still she will come back to you. Hello there. How are you? Shake the foundation. She will always come back to you. And as long as you let her in, she will keep coming back, keep coming back. So she goes out and mess around, but she always come back. So that means that you are still Still in a uh, a, a high-ranking element, even though she hadn't co-joined co with you, she hadn't came back to you. But you were being Hoover to make sure you stay in the matrix. That's why she haven't just left because probably at some point she's planning to come back. She's planning to come back and do the same thing that she's done to you, Mark, that she's done over again. Anytime the narcissist hoover like that and they stay in the matrix, they're keeping you on that sideline because there may be a time when they don't have fuel or good fuel and the fuel they have is still left in you. And if you're in that matrix, they will uh, circulate that matrix again. Uh, good morning, Lynette. How are you? She said, that was me. He made me a very evil person. She said, and I was only with him for six months. I discarded him. It would be a year in June and he still finds ways to hoover me because you are a primary source. When the narcissist find a few injector and they give 
copious amount of fuel. They do not want to let you out of the matrix. They do not, then cannot, and will not be faithful to you. They will triangulate. They will triangulate while they have you. And that's just like Mark. Mark, you know, she was probably triangulating when she was with you the whole time. You just didn't know it. She just showed her hand and the mask came off and it was revealed. And so when she's with that guy, you're with that guy because she mirrored you. Your personality she gives to him. So he not only have her, but he has you. And you got to remember when the narcissist is mirroring you, they are absorbing all the good qualities about you. They take that good quality and that's the mask when they're honeymooning, when they're love bombing, when they're idolizing that person. That's the mask that they're presenting what you gave them. So Mark, the scene is, is while she's with them, you are with them. And that's why they love those soul ties. You probably can feel her when she's getting ready to call, you can feel her. When she's hurting, you can feel her. When she come around, you can feel her. When she's at a sexual high, you can feel her because that soul tie keep you tied into her soul. And that's why it is called a soul tie. She said, yeah, my Mark, triangulate. Absolutely. Hello, Apostle David. How are you? Blessings to you also. And so when you get triangulated, it is the fuel matrix. And you can tell when triangulation is going on. Someone has to be devalued. There's only 24 hours. There's one matrix, uh, one uh, uh, narcissist, and he needs fuel. He can't have too much out of him. So he has to watch even those who have four and five that they're triangulating, triangulating at one time, someone would send the wrong text to the wrong person. So they learn to keep their text at the top and keep their name at the top. And they are know who they're talking to. And they're very organized. Usually uh, narcissists that are triangulating four and five at a time. They are very, very organized. If you go in their house, their closet is systematic. Their papers are systematic. They get up at a certain time. They go to sleep at a certain time. They are very, very, very organized. They have to be because they organize their specimen in a foul matrix. And they, they that foul matrix, they know what they are going to give to them. And remember, because they mirror, they also mirror the, who they are triangling. So you could, and, and when they come to you, you can tell who they're triangulating because they bring that person's character back to you. And you're looking at them because that's not who they were at first, but it's who they've become now. Is who they become now. And so not only is he taking you to them, but he's bringing them to you. New Beginning 101 said, she said, yes, I got Hoover today while he was picking up the kids saying that he just wanted to make sure that I was doing okay and that I was dealing with everything. I was hoping he would stop, but no. See, if he's triangling you, there's been a failure somewhere or there's been a discard. He's discarded somebody to come after you because narcissists know that they only have 24 hours. Narcissists know they only have so much fuel. That's why they need so much fuel because they're putting out fuel. It takes a lot of fuel to pull in a specimen, to pull in uh, another source of supply and to triangulate them and to love bomb them and to honeymoon them them and to idolize them and to get the personality they need when you have none of the characters of love, none of the characters of goodness. I mean, you are this empty void. It's like loving a wall with no heart, but it's moving, it's talking, it's doing, but it has no feeling. So all the feelings it is experiencing is what they got from someone else. They are a tank walking filled with stolen characteristics, stolen feelings, stolen emotions, and they're giving that emotion back to somebody else. So when they are mirroring you, it's like they are taking that as a form of fuel, your character, to give to someone else, to make them look like whatever they should look like. And SH said, we did not have children together, but I noticed that my soon-to-be X would be harder on one of his children, the one who wasn't as loyal to their former family structure. Absolutely, because he hate when they don't have control. A narcissist don't know anything about not having control. A narcissist have to have control at all times because a lack of control is weaknesses. Narcissists hate 
weaknesses. They want you weak, but they have to remain strong. That's why you have to find yourself praising them, building them, giving to them. And once you stop that, they start to discard you because you're not a source of supply. You are taking up time and energy. She said, take a lot of fuel to keep lying and to keep up with the lies. Absolutely. Uh, Red, New Beginning said, Red, you are so right. It does. It takes a lot of fuel. That's why they can triangulate two and three uh, sources at one time and they cannot Categorize in ranking order these sources, and there will always be a primary, secondary, third, their uh, third, uh, third source, fourth source, fifth source. They will always have somebody in the matrix, and when one goes up, another one goes down, because this is how they can balance the system. When one goes up, one goes down. He'll know that when he discard the one, he has to pump the other, because uh, in order to balance the system. And so this is why the the narcissists can seem so confusing and they go word salad. They just talk and say crazy things. And that's why they get you to talk, 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 talk. In the beginning, when you were with the, the narcissist, they want you to talk. As a matter of fact, they, they maximize the realm of pause because when you are talking, the conversation is going and you pause, it's, it's this awkward silence. And then you feel the need to keep talking and talking and talking. And they always ask you questions about your job, personal questions about your family. They tell lies about stuff they went through just so you can tell your horror story because they're planning to use it down the line. And Mark said, they are, she said, they are to the cost of something else. Um, the sad truth, you know it. Uh, they are happy. They are happy something else suffered. Right. Absolutely. The ex news supply of eight months is also a narcissist. Ooh, he's getting ready to go through. Um, this is why he won't stop hoovering. Of course, somebody has has been discarded. They're, they're going through the devaluation stage or they've been discarded. And when they've been discarded, there is maximum pain. When the narcissist called maximum pain, that the happiness that he had mirrored for someone, he began to express that emotion, but it came from someone else. And that's why their happiness, one minute they're happy this way, the another minute they're happy that way, because this person was happy this way and the other person what happened this way. So he mirrored them both and he has to choose which one to be happy. And this is why when you with the narcissist for a long time, you are wondering who in the world is it? You know, today you are here and tomorrow you way over there. And then by the nighttime, you come way over here because they are trying to tri triangulating and they are mirroring their specimen. And you know, they're mirroring their specimen because the variation of their character is beginning to express themselves. And the narcissists love this because you can never lock them down. You can never say you are just like this because they keep changing. They keep becoming, they're like Houdini's. They keep changing themselves. They are never the same. That's why they can love this today. And you give it to them this evening. They hate it. Why? Because they've been with the person now who hate it. And before they was with the person who love it because the narcissist don't have their own character. They are empty boards. They, they are wounded people who never heal, who close themselves out. There is a Disney movie. I think it's called Inside Out. Anybody know anything about that? They have children. And it's a Disney movie where this girl had all of these emotions and each emotion took on character. And they began to play that emotion out of character. Character. So you saw what was going on in her head played out in the open, her anger, hatred, uh, when she was insensitivity, when she was just didn't know what was happening, when she was really sad, when she blanked out all of her emotions went off and she felt nothing. And that's the way the narcissist is. All of their brain emotions cave in and they are operating out of a dark blackout zone. There are no lights on in the realm of the emotion. And when there's no lights on, they really don't know what to do. And that's why you can look at a narcissist and they're a grown woman, grown man. But then you look at them, they act like children. She said, is this why he won't stop hoovering me? Exactly. She said, they're like roller coaster. Yep. That's right. New beginning. Yep. Um, 
and earth uh, harvester says good morning to everyone. That's exactly right. And that's why when you are with a narcissist, it's, you see the kid in them. You see the kid coming out and you're wondering how in the world you get to be so successful being around people because they do their business partners just like they do the people they're involved with. They're just not intimate with them. They're using them as business partners, but they devalue them. They take them through the love bombing. They take them through the ideation, uh, uh, idealizing them. And what they do with the love bombing, they don't love bomb them. They idealize them. They build them and build them and give them all kind of perks and reward them for those perks until they are committed to their narcissist. But when they are with that narcissist, the same triggers that you get in, 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 in the dependency upon them. It's the same hormonal adrenaline flow that happens in all their business partners. And then they, once they get them up, their job is to get them up high enough through idolization or through uh, love bombing. Because when they drop you unexplainably, then you go after them with all of your might. You go after them because you want to know, what did I do wrong? How did this happen? Because our human brain don't want us to hurt anybody and not know what we've done. So they go after them. And then what he do? He hoovers them back in. He builds them, builds them, builds them, builds them. And he take them higher, drop them higher and higher, drop them. The harder the fall, the more confusion they get until they are missing memory. They are wondering what's going on with them. These are business people. These are not intimate partners. These are business people. Even in business, these people are like that. She said the bus driver at, uh, at the end with all the angry guys in his head was like the ex-narcissist. Wow. Wow. And see, when you when you got people who struggle in their emotion, the, the narcissists don't struggle with their emotion. They take on other people's emotion because emotionally they cut off. Remember, the pain was so severe and they was traumatized in their youth, in their childhood until they cut things off. And they're this empty shell moving and walking. And then sometimes even with few, it comes up. This is why they get hateful and mean. And you're wondering, what did I do? One minute we were laughing and he's laughing because he got the mirroring from someone else. And just like Red said, we laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And then one day he stopped laughing because now he got the mirroring of someone else who don't laugh. And when they're excited, they got the mirroring of someone who was excited. Even to the point they would try to take on the language of someone else. She said, oh, my God, when I was in Jamaica, I said to myself, the narc who was 50 years old was at the beach splashing in the water like a child. And he used to tell me he loved me going to the beach when he was a kid. Wow. He loved going to the beach when he was a kid. See memories memories. Most narcissists act like children. Most narcissists act like children. And so many people feel very uncomfortable because it's like you're loving your child. It's like you're being with your child, but the adrenaline, the, the, um, uh, the different hormones going through the body, the different direction and brain waves uh, that because they totally redirect your brain waves. They redirect. If you don't watch it, they will redirect how your brain thinks. The longer you with them, the more they train you. They train your brain on shutdown. They train your emotions, how to think until you are so confused. You fade out. You no longer know who you are. You start disappearing. And so when people get around you, they got you trained without them because you are disappearing in their sight and they slowly see that you're missing things, that you're disappearing. You're not as caring like you used to. And so as you get older with the narcissist, the narcissist triangulate more. They need more specimen. They get more specimen. They get to use more people because you get 
older and you and sometimes you grow tired, you grow weary and the fight come back up in you. And when the fight come back up in you, you go to the resistance stage. So where the narcissism that from the narcissist used to be absorbed, they find it hard. They hitting walls because you are waking up. And a lot of programs are on about narcissism. And so people are being educated. So the narcissist is not getting away like they used to get away. And that's why they got to pull you in quickly and get those hormones to work and reroute your brain, get the mirroring to work it because you love yourself. And so they portray yourself and then they crash you trauma bonding, devaluation, gaslighting, lying and cheating and deception. All of that master manipulation, all of it has a place with the narcissist because their whole thing is to keep you addicted. You have to be addicted. Mark say, she's being so nice that it makes me question if I could be wrong about her being a narcissist. Mark, she's hoovering you. You, you, You're fading. You're fading back in. That's what is happening. And what she's going to do is what she's done. You know it's bad when you have two kids, but when someone... mm, When someone asks you how many kids you have, your answer is three, two young ones and an adult child. Absolutely. Because that's what they act like. That's why they are so selfish, so self-centered. They can't handle your success. They can't handle you buying new things and you getting happy for yourself. They can't handle you just fixing yourself up unless they want to use you as your trophy. There are some higher grade narcissists, higher mid grade narcissists uh, about uh, or the semantic narcissists that love showboating. They, they are about being uh, the best of everything. So you are a trophy on their arm. They're going to make sure you look good, smell good, your hair is good. Then when the door closes, it gets all crazy. Sandy said, yes, Mark, that's a uh, Hoover. And Mark, if you're not careful, remember I told you, you are primary source. She will be back. The reason she called you every three days, she needs to keep you in the matrix. She's not ready to come back because she needs to triangulate. And probably you was asking some things, making her, trying to make her be more accountable, more responsible. She had to pull out and make you suffer because when she discard you, you want her back because of that love bombing. You want to go back to the way it used to be. You want to go back to that first love. You want to go back to uh, where she seemed like she cared for you and she never cared. Mark, if you let her back in, you're going to have to be devaluated in a greater way. Every time the narcissists come back, the trauma gets greater. The bond get more massive. The trauma bonding is there and it's going to get more massive and the torment and the torture is going to be more massive. And then finally the discard. There is no way you're going to be with a narcissist without being discarded. There's no way you will suffer a discard. They need you out of the way so they can go somewhere else and have the freedom to uh, get that supply back online. He said, yes, Mark Summers, that's a Hoover. She said, close the door. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once a narcissist, they are a narcissist. She haven't changed. She haven't changed. (coughs) Excuse me. She she haven't changed, Mark. And she's going to show you uh, in no uncertain terms that she haven't changed. And it won't be long before who she really is start coming out. See, she can hide right now because you really want her. So you're willing not to see some things, Mark, that are right there in your face. And it's going to be harder for you because you have more information. You didn't know all the information now. But look at all the information you have. For myself and Dr. Bryant, all the things she's telling you, and there's no telling how many other programs that you're watching saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing. And then we got everybody that's on here that that has been through. You talking about we are narcissist specialists. So are you. You are specializing in the craft, especially when you've been with them a while. You know it. You don't went through it. You don't went through the cycle. You have went through their system. It has happened the same way over and over and over and over and over. Nothing has changed. And RN says to Mark, question, was it not a pattern of abuse, Mark? Logic. Approach, she said, approach, write it down. And if you wonder, 
if you wonder, look at the things you have written down. They're trying to warn you. She said, Mark is like a child that throws a tantrum when they don't get what they want. When you give them what they want, they, uh, what they want, they next, she said, the next tantrum is much bigger. Absolutely. And Earth Harvest said, ex narts went to the beach to be visual, constant. He got bifocals at the beach and used it out of our home to look through the windows of women. Oh my God. I am glad today. She said, thank God. Thank God he delivered me out of this madness. When you get somebody that's not, and let me tell you something about a narcissist. A lot of narcissists won't use protection if they are triangulating because they feel that they have this sense of knowing people and they think they know people who have a sexual disease. So they will use unprotected sex because they think they are beyond the disease itself. They will use unprotected sex and then show up to you. And so what could happen? They can be infected and they will not tell you. They are not going to warn you. They're going to sleep with you because they feel like you deserve the pain, that you deserve the torment. And even if they knew that it would kill you, they will still do it because a narcissist really hate you. I want to talk about the narcissistic stare. And then I want to talk about recovery because recovery happened in layers. The pain happened in layers. It didn't happen all at once. The recovery happened in layers. And you'll gradually get who you are back. And see, Mark, the reason you are so bent on having a back because you haven't cleared enough to let your mind clear. That fog is still there. That illusion is still there. She still got the mask on. You still have not seen your wife. Your wife is a narcissist. She needs pain. And she got you there while she triangling. And these specimens that's supposed to be full supply, narcissists don't always get good fuel. Sometimes they get crazy people. Sometimes they get people they don't want the fuel from because they are trying to hold them in accountability. These people don't know that they're narcissists. They're treating them like regular folk. And after a while, the narcissists get bored because they're attention deficits. They have tension, attention deficits. You can't hold their mind still for long periods of time. You just cannot. A new beginning step. Yeah, after my second daughter was born, my ex got, uh, he got what, antibiotics? Let me see. Oh, antibiotics for chlamydia. And that's when I was done. Got myself checked. Thank, uh, thank the Lord that I am clear. He still says that it was the flu and about it. Oh my God. She said, yes, she did leave and come back twice. He said, and the devaluation did get worse the last time. Yep. And when she came back the last time, the love bombing was out of this world. You know what? That's why you were hooked. That's why you hooked. But just like she was saying, Mark, you, you can recall, you don't recall now, you know, that it is not good. God always give us wisdom. Oh, God said that pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And when you look up that, <clears throat> that means that God will warn you systematically of a failure zone getting ready to happen. He will let nothing sneak up on you. God will always warn you. God will always sound the alarm. Now, once he sound the alarm, if we ignore the alarm, it's up to us. And you got all kind of alarm bells going off, Mark. Because the sign of you that want the love bombing is about the love bombing. You're addicted. you still addicted. And you got to go through rehab. And rehab takes you away from the drug, takes you out of the atmosphere to get you uh, rehabilitated. You are still in the atmosphere. You're still dealing with her every three days. So your emotion is still tied up. Your adrenaline is still going. The, the hormones are still raging. You're still being real routed because you have hope of her coming back. When she come back, if you thought that devaluation was tremendous, you haven't seen nothing yet. She's going to make you pay for allowing her to come back. You pay the price, not her. And there will be another triangulation. It will be. Hello, Mata Cynthia. How are you? 
there will be another triangulation. <clears throat> it won't stop. Even with you, if you let her come back, there's probably somebody she has on, 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 uh, on hold while she's with you. She's using them and using you. And she could be sleeping with you and him at the same time. Or there could be more that she's sleeping with at the same time. And then it, it, she depict which one is given the best fuel. She'll hold that one and discard the other one and uh, devalue the other one. And so she got a system that is going on. Mark, it will not be worth it because you're going to get hurt. And the hurt that you're experiencing now is tremendous. But if you let her back in, Mark, you're going to get a tremendous hurt. You're going to get a tremendous hurt. She set up for it. Devaluation don't start after the love bombing. It's, it starts the day you let the narcissist in because that's the cycle. The day you let the narcissist in, you are headed toward devaluation. You are. She said, it will progress. Love yourself more and walk away. Do not look back. Absolutely. I agree. I agree because it's a lie, Mark. It's not the truth. It's all a lie. It's a, all a lie. They hide behind the mask. That narcissist is not uh, real with what they're presenting you. She wants you on hold, but you are getting total disrespect. She had the men there. She's doing it in front of your face. You know she's not faithful. And yet every three days she called. What is that? What is that? You got to want more for yourself than she do because she's not going to protect you. She's not going to protect you. You may be in present danger because she's done had probably unprotected sex and she'll bring that. And sometimes the disease, especially AIDS, don't show up immediately. So you probably need to think about that, it, whether it's worth your life, because that's what you may be uh uh, risking. She is mirroring the men that she's with. The mirror is she going to bring you the men that she's been with. She's going to bring that to your house. You will see the mirror. The Bible said you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You got to accept the truth and to, in order to know the truth, Mark, so you can be free. She said your flesh was your flesh has control now, Mark. You have to uh, take total control of your mind and body. Absolutely. You're going to have to feel your mind, work your body. The Bible says you transform your mind. Put things in your mind. Put that word of God in your mind. Read books toward strength. Read books toward production. Read the Bible. Read Christian books toward moving forward. Read Christian books toward loving yourself. Get inspirational books. Get business books about loving yourself. And then SH says, um, she said, um, New female warning us of female narcissists make me understand the real value of this when females accept help from men while they've been in the opposite of this as well. Pretty special, yes. And then Gabrielle say my child's father was a knock and he put me through so much, yet he is married and didn't know when I got pregnant and he triangulated. Mm, is he... Is he now, he is now in jail, okay? Should he be allowed to talk to my children or let go? Uh, I will answer that in a minute. Uh, Earth Harvest says, we married, had a child, not behavior, spired up, he, we divorced. He Hoover, my mom and my dad convinced me to marry him again and not risk having more children. Oh my God out of wedlock. So she said, and the narc got worse. I left. Yes. And New Beginning said, I was told once that when I took, when God takes someone out of your life, it's not because he won't uh, see you hurt. It's because he has someone who is better out there for you. Um, and she said, as long as you learn from the past. And Gabrielle said, distance yourself now. You are the protection of your children. I don't think they have any children, but he's definitely the protection of himself. She said, I'm still in pain after almost a year. See, Lynette, that's what 
This is why I do what I do. I have dealt with hundreds of cases. There are some cases we didn't get to in time. They killed themselves behind a narcissist. Uh, I'll never forget. Uh, they told this young lady to go back. She went back and it was old mothers in the church that told her to go back. She went back. He cut her up and threw her body parts over the counter and allowed her two sons, which was four and two, to see him kill her. And he went to jail for a few years and got out but she will never come back. You have to make sure it's worth it. And it's not, never. She said she's still in pain. Lynette said she's still in pain. And it's been a year. As far as children with the narcissist and he's in jail, I would recommend that you get uh, counsel, professional counsel as to the legal terms of agreement with that child because it is his child and the courts will sustain you and uphold you that you don't have to let that man visit uh let the children visit him in jail because it could traumatize them and psychiatrists and counselors may recommend against it she said my child's father is a narcissist and he's married but I didn't know oh I did not know it he is now in jail and should be and should he be allowed to be a father still? Uh, do you know what? I would not. That's This is why I'm saying get legal counsel. I would prefer to direct you that way in legal counsel. Until then, I will hold on to my children and keep them safe until I be directed by a counselor. I would not permit it until I get the direction of a counselor. And I think that is just wise. That is just wise because he, he is the father and the, the law will recognize him as the father, but the law will protect the children from the father who may have a bad image or if the image may traumatize the child. She should say, yes, I feel like killing myself before from now I am being treated. See, this is what I'm saying, Mark. Can you handle another devaluation and discard? The past is the past for a season. She said for a season, leave it there, but put your trust in God and keep moving forward and you will survive. Okay. Um, people beyond all understanding, if he's in jail, this is your time to distance yourself. I think I had um, NC and mediator, the narc rage and abused our children, no visitation after that. Please document and step ahead. Okay, let me say this. Your emotional trauma in the course of law, when I've been with people, the, the law is the law. Uh, while you are away, please get you uh, a counselor that can uh, assist you with the children. Because if you wait and take that time without giving you a counselor, he get him a good lawyer when you could have got him while he was in jail and you would have more power. He get him a lawyer and get out. He may visit those children. If he a lord narcissist, a lord narcissist are known to be pedophiles. So you have to protect your children because if he abuse you, he will abuse those children. They are safe with you. Please get legal counsel. Yes, I agree you document everything, but I agree you get legal counsel. And if you can afford legal counsel, go to a program that will assist you and get a counselor with the children. She says, um, uh, don't, don't we all uh, here with the same inner work? To do yes, ma'am, are in absolutely new beginnings. And yeah, protect the kids. You protect the kids through legal counsel. Use what you have, and what you have is the courts because the courts would acknowledge him as the father. Use the court system. He's in jail, and the kids are in a state of trauma. You are have your best situation now. Use legal counsel because when he get out. That's what he's going to use. He's already crazy. And if he's psychopathic, I will not risk, I will not risk it. Get legal 